Hi guys, welcome back to In Case of Econ Struggles. Today we're talking about the Bellman equation or a form of value function useful to solve some of the macro models that we've seen. Today we're going to be using the sequential market equilibrium as an example. So real quick, we'll go over what a sequential market equilibrium setup is. We'll form the Bellman equation. We'll take a first order condition using that Bellman equation. Then we'll show that it is equal to the sequential market equilibrium first order condition that we got when we don't use the Bellman equation. So remember that a sequential market equilibrium is an allocation with consumption and assets between t equals zero to infinity for everyone given the prices qt. It solves everyone's utility maximization problem given here. It ensures that we have market clearing in the goods market in every period. So the consumption of the two people is equal to the total endowment in the economy. We also need to have market clearing in the asset market in every period where the number of assets being sold and bought is exactly the same. We also need to ensure that neither Bill nor Dave, neither the two people in this economy go into an infinite number of debt. We call that the no Ponzi game condition. We also had from that U equation that the price of a bond is equal to beta times the ratio of the margin utilities for each person. If that was a little hazy, check out my full video on the sequential market equilibrium first order conditions linked at the end of this video. Otherwise, let's keep going to form the Bellman equation. So in the Bellman equation, our goal is basically to take an infinite period problem like we saw above and turn it into two periods where we have today and well, not today, the rest of the future just kind of put at the end where we don't really have to worry about it. We're really just worried about today and not today. So the way this is gonna work is we're gonna set up a function of just state variables, which is equal to some function u of stuff today, generally the utility function in a period, plus beta, which is our time discount factor times the same value function of the state variable tomorrow for the infinite future part of the problem. Now, what I like to do when I'm setting up these sorts of problems is kind of make a state choice and parameter list. So here are state variables, the amount of assets that I have today. The choice variable is the amount of consumption that I have today. The parameters of the problem are things like my endowment, my time discount factor, all those fun things. So here it's relatively simple where my Bellman equation becomes my function of my assets today. It's equal to U of CT, which is just the natural log of CT plus beta times that same function of the state variable or the assets tomorrow. Our budget constraint is consumption plus the assets that I buy for tomorrow is equal to my endowment plus the assets that I have today. I'm just gonna solve that real quick for CT just so I can have everything in terms of my assets and I don't have to think about two different variables. So here, that's all I've done. I've just done that here. Now, my first order condition is going to be dv dct, which is zero by the envelope theorem is equal to du dct plus beta times the derivative of the value function with respect to my state variable tomorrow times the derivative of that state variable tomorrow with respect to the consumption today. So that equals zero. I can take the derivative of a natural log function. I'm beta. I don't know what this dv dat plus one is, but I do know that if I consume one more coconut today, I can buy one less asset tomorrow, which is why I have negative one over qt right there. Now, what is dv dat plus one? Now, the trick I'm gonna use for this is I'm gonna take dv dat, which is just one over ct, and I'm just gonna bring it forward one period. So if I bring it forward one period, I'm just gonna get one over ct plus one times one. I'm gonna bring that down and plug that back in for dv dat plus one into my initial first order condition. I'm gonna do some algebra, I keep going, and you'll notice that what I'm gonna get is that QT is beta times the ratio of the marginal utilities, which is exactly what we got from the non-Bellman equation first order condition. So this is a really handy way to take a more complicated infinite horizon problem and turn it into something simpler that makes the math easier for taking these first order conditions. Hopefully this gives you a basic idea of how the Bellman equation works and how you form it. If it did, make sure to like and subscribe and we will see you next time for another case of Econ Struggles.